بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد uh, Continuing with جزء عمة Today's session is going to be the first session uh, about سورة النازعات uh, And before we start سورة النازعات I would like to mention uh, a statement for uh, the scholars they said that generally speaking the surahs of the Quran uh, are connected beginning with end if you noticed in Surah Amma Allah Azza wa initiated the surah talking about the events of the hereafter concluded the surah talking about the events of the hereafter given different details but the point is that in general, uh, the beginning and the end of the surahs uh, are coherent, they're, they're connected, they're related. And likewise, they said, uh, in general, the surahs are connected. Beginning of the second surah is connected to the end of the previous surah. Uh, surah Al-Nazi'at uh, is the second surah in the juz uh, of Amma. It is uh, a Meccan surah, the type is Meccan. It is me a Meccan surah by consensus. There is no disagreement amongst the scholars. There is no difference of opinion that it is a Meccan surah. Uh, its name, it has different names. Just like Amma had Amma and an naba uh, Surah Al-Nazi'at has three uh, famous names for it. Al-Nazi'at, Al-Sahira, and At-Tamma. Ibn Abbas عنه, said that uh, Surah Al-Nazi'at was uh, revealed after Surah uh, Amma, time-wise, the sequence in time. The reason for revelation, uh, if you recollect we, when we gave the introduction uh, of Tafsir we, and we spoke about the issue of uh, reasons for revelation, we said that not all surahs have a particular reason for which it was revealed. Uh, surah Al-Nazi'at as a surah doesn't have a specific reason uh, behind its revelation. However, some of the scholars concluded based on a hadith that is mentioned in the Musnad, Musnad al-Imam Ahmad, and it was classified as authentic by Sheikh Al-Arna'ut rahmatullahi alayhi and it is narrated by Aisha radiyallahu anha that there is a particular reason for a segment of the surah. She said radiyallahu anha the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam continued to be asked about the time of the hour when it was, right? Until Allah azza wa jal Sit down. Fima anta min the yes aluna kani saa. Ayana mursaha. When is the hour, right? So Allah Azza wa Jal revealed Fima anta min the kraha. What knowledge do you have that you should mention it, right? Uh, one of the scholars said that this particular question that is mentioned in the surah itself, yes aluna kani saa is a clear indication that there was a question addressed to the Prophet ﷺ about the hour and then Allah Azza wa Jal revealed the answer to that which is Fima anta min dikraha to the end of the uh, surah. Now going to the core of the session which is the tafsir itself. Uh, just like any Meccan surah, we mentioned that one of the distinct features of the surahs, uh, the Meccan surahs is that uh, they address uh, the basis of uh, aqidah, the basis of creed, uh, tawheed, uh, the uh, hereafter, the resurrection, uh, holding people to uh, account, recompense for your actions in this life. Likewise is the case for uh, Surah Al-Nazi'at or in Surah Al-Nazi'at. In the first segment, the first uh, few verses, the first four verses, or fa actually five verses of the surah, Allah Azza wa Jal gives an oath. 
والنازعات غرقا واو in Arabic is a letter used when one gives an oath when you say wallahi واو is I swear by so Allah Azza wa Jal here is swearing by and he's there's a list of five different verses والنازعات غرقا by those who extract with violence Allah is given an oath by something what is this something this something is those who extract with violence ibn mas'ud and ibn abbas radiyallahu anhuma said that this is referring to the angels and the entire set of five verses allah azza wa jal is swearing by different types of angels according to the predominant opinion amongst the scholars of tafsir right and nazi'at ghurqa are the angels who tear out the souls of those destined for hell. And the reason for this violent extraction of the souls of those who are destined for hell is clarified in a hadith by the Prophet ﷺ in which he gave detailed information about what happens to the life of Barzakh the journey of death, the journey of the hereafter, which starts with death, right? These souls that are destined to or for punishment in hell, whether it's a disbeliever or a disobedient believer, he is approached with the angel of death. See, the angel of death comes down with either angels of punishment or angels of mercy. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal's mercy. Allahumma amin. When they come down to extract his soul, they address that person with a very violent and scary statements. Ya ayyatuha nafsu al O you evil soul, kanat fil jasad al which was in an evil body. Come out to the wrath of Allah. Now, anyone sees such scary looking angels and hears such statements would definitely become terrified. And as they say, he would be scared to death, but he's faced in death at that moment, right? So, the Prophet ﷺ tells us, so that soul spreads in the body, refusing to come out. And this is where the violent extraction of the soul happens. As Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَلَوْ تَرَى إِذْ يَتَوَفَّ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا الْمَلَائِكَةِ يَضْرِبُونَ وُجُوهَهُمْ وَأَدْبَارَهُمْ They strike those who transgressed, those who wronged themselves. And there is nothing more evil one can do to himself and there is no more oppression one can do to anyone but that which he does to himself by not obeying Allah Azza wa Jal and adhering to his path. He said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and it starts spreading in the body and the angels start striking his body and then they extract it violently and it tears. This is the first type of angels by whom Allah is given an oath, an oath by those who extract with violence. Then, when nashiqati nashta, and by those who remove with ease. Again, Ibn Abbas said, it's referring to the angels who ease out the souls of those who are destined for paradise. We ask Allah's mercy and bounty. And we ask Allah to make us amongst those. Why? Contrary to the first type, this type is addressed by the angels of mercy that come down with the angel of death who takes the soul, right? And say, Ya ayyatuha nafsu tayyibah. O you pure.
pure soul good soul كانت في الجسد الطيب which was in a good and pure body اخرجي إلى رضا من الله أو إلى رضوان من الله come out to the pleasure of Allah one is being given this glad tidings it's good news come out and Allah is pleased with you so it comes out with ease he feels comfort and relaxed so it comes out smooth as the Prophet ﷺ described قال فتخرج روحه تسيل كما تسيل القطرة من في السقاء his soul comes out as easy as a drop of water would slide on the tip of a jug of water. Did you ever notice when you drank from a glass of water or poured a glass of water from a jug into a glass and that final drop of water, how smooth it slides on that glass jug of water? This is how the Prophet ﷺ described the soul in its process of departing the body. Slides so easy. Allahumma inna nas'aluka min fadl. The third set of angels by whom Allah Azzawajal swore, He said, وَالسَّابِحَاتِ سَبْحَ And by those who glide as if swimming. Ali ibn Abi Talib, رضي الله عنه, said, Allah is swearing here by angels who move very fast as, as if one is swimming on water, in water, right? And this is describing their movement going up and going down between the heavens and earth, each according to their tasks. Then Allah is says, فَالسَّابِقَاتِ سَبَقًا And those who, re- who race each other in a race. These are, according to Ali ibn Abi Talib, are the angels who race in executing the commandments of Allah Azza wa Jal. Because angels do not disobey Allah Azza wa Jal. As Allah described them, لا يعصون الله ما أمرهم. They do not disobey Allah in whatever He commands them. ويفعلون ما يمرون. Another confirmation of that. And they do what they're commanded to do. And then, فَالْمُدَبِّرَاتِ amra, And those, and by those who arrange each matter. These are angels who arrange the matters of the universe according to what Allah Azza wa Jal allocated to them of the tasks. For example, uh, angel Jibra, uh, Jibreel, or Jibra'il alayhi salam is the one who comes down with the wahi, the revelation from Allah The angel of death is specialized in taking souls. Uh, Mikael is the one in charge of rain. Ridwan is the one in charge of the gates of Jannah. Malik is the one in charge of Jahannam, and so on and so forth. Now, Allah Azza wa started this, this surah by a set of five verses in which He swore by different types of angels. And Allah, is, Allah Azza wa Jal can swear by anything, but we as humans can only swear by Him. Either his names or his attributes, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we are commanded by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam not to do otherwise. Otherwise, what would happen? We commit kufr and a narration, shirk. Man halafa bi ghayri lahi faqad kafar, wa man halafa bi ghayri lahi faqad ashrak. He who swears by other than Allah has committed kufr, and another narration reads, has committed shirk. But Allah swears by anything. And when Allah Azza wa Jal swears, it's either to highlight the importance of what He's swearing with, uh, by, 
or its virtue, right? Or the importance of what is coming after the oath and the confirmation of its truthfulness. And in this case, Allah Azza wa is swearing to confirm that resurrection and the day of judgment are facts that will take place. The first verse after that says, يَوْمَ تَرْجُفُ الرَّاجِفَةِ On the day, the blow of the horn will convulse creation. So Allah is swearing that a day will come, which is the day of resurrection and the day of accountability, will come. And then he gives some details about that day. Allah is telling Muhammad وسلم, remember and mention to people that day, that day when the blow is made in the horn and people will die. And that's referring to the first blow in the horn, the blow of death. When, it, when Allah Azza wa commands Israfil, which is another angel who has a special task, which is blowing in the horn. When Allah commands him to blow the first, horn, the first blow, he blows the horn and all creation are put to death, including the angels. And then Allah Azza wa Jal commands the angel of death and Israfil to die. And they die and Allah Azza wa Jal, who was before the creation, and who exists after the death of all creation remains alone. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah Azza wa Jal is swearing that that day will happen when that first blow comes and the shape and the features of earth change. Then Allah says, There will follow it the subsequent one, the second blow. Remember in Surah Amma we said that Abu Huraira عنه, was asked about the time between the first and the second blow. The second blow is the blow of resurrection, when Allah resurrects His creation, right? And He said, 40. Al Qurtubi said, It's 40 years according to a sound uh, narration. قُلُوبٌ يَوْمَئِذٍ وَاجِفَةٌ Hearts that day will tremble. Out of fear, they'll be scared. The events that will take place will be terrifying. It will shake people's hearts, and especially those who are in denial. Those who rejected the message of Allah, those who rejected the messengers, those who refused to obey and adhere. Abasaruha khashia, their eyes humbled. The eyes of those whose hearts will be trembling in fear, in extreme fear, will be humbled in a state of humility because of what they will be seeing. And this is referring to those who either disbelieved or disobeyed because they will be seeing the introduction of the consequence of their either denial or disobedience to Allah Azza wa Jalla. They are saying, Allah Azza wa Jal, here is talking about what the kuffar of the Quraysh were saying at that time. Will we indeed be returned to our former state of life? Meaning after we die. Will we really come back to life after death? After reaching the pit, referring to the 
grief. Ibn Abbas said, radiallahu anhu, they were saying it in denial and in refusal to accept that this will ever take place. Even if we should be, be decayed bones, they're saying this in radical to the Prophet and of the warning that he was given them on behalf of Allah because these are the words of Allah conveyed by Muhammad قالوا تلك إذا كرة خاسرة. They say that then would be a losing return. Muhammad ibn Kaab, rahmatullah alayhi, said, Quraysh said, if this was to really happen, then we will be in utter loss. You know, when when someone is in denial and he sees by his own eyes that what he was rejecting, refusing and denying is actually a reality, a fact that's taking place and that he is living that event which he was denying, he feels the loss. He is convinced he has no other choice. And they are saying, if this was to be true, what Muhammad is saying and conveying, then there will be no escape from the punishment of the Lord he is talking about. And from the day or on the day that he is warning from. فَإِنَّمَا هِيَ زَجْرَةٌ وَاحِدَةٌ Indeed, it will be but one shout. Now this is referring to the first blow. Al-Hasan al-Basri, rahmatullahi alayhi, said, it is a shout of anger. Ibrahim al-Taymi said, Allah Azza wa Jal will never reach a state of anger more than on the day of resurrection. And this is mentioned by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a narration that is reported by Muslim. And uh, reported by Muslim and narrated by Abu Hurairah. It's a long narration about intercession. But I will extract one of the statements, which is the one that we want to hear. When they first approach Adam alayhi salam to intercede. By the way, the intercession sought is not to be saved from hell and admitted into Jannah. No, it's just so that accountability starts. As difficult as things will be, and as severe as the suffering will be, they would say, we don't care. Let's just get this over with. Let's get this over with, the suffering of the gathering of the people not knowing the painful punishment in hell they just want to save themselves from the suffering and the pain they're going through and experiencing just in the gathering we ask Allah's mercy so Adam would say inna rabbi ghadib al yawma ghadaban lam yahdab qablahu my Lord has become angry today in a state which he has never reached before and and will never reach after it. So that's why Ibrahim Uttaymi said that this day will be the day on which Allah Azza wa Jal will be the most angry about or with his creation. فَإِذَا هُمْ بِالسَّاهِرَةِ And suddenly, they will be alert upon the earth's surface. Suddenly, just like death comes suddenly, resurrection comes suddenly. 
and they will suddenly find themselves alive back in their original shape after their bones became decay decayed they will go back to their the original normal shape a life on the face or the surface of earth allah azza wa jal will resurrect them and gather them ibn mas'ud said allah azza wa jal will change the earth it becomes like a a plain plate that looks like silver it's a land over which no sin was ever committed and this scene concludes the first set, the oath and the thing by which Allah Azza wa Jal, or for which Allah Azza wa Jal gave the oath to confirm. The oath is to confirm that what's coming after that is a reality that will take place. And with this we conclude the first session, inshaAllah. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu